Hello, well, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Space Empires 5. I'm your lovely host, Kelvin. So, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away... Oh, yeah, don't... Do not adjust your YouTube. This is... This is all supposed to be black. It'll change once you're actually into the game. Menus are fixed resolution. Anyway, this is an older game. Uh, and a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away... I did a Let's Look at this uh, on my channel a while back. And it actually elicited a lot of interest. So I decided to do a full and proper series of it. It's similar to Civilization V, but in space. Should have done this when Beyond Earth came out. Because this is a better game than Beyond Earth. Better game than Civilization V. I know I'll get a lot of hate in the comments for that, but hey. I never liked Civ V much. I was never actually a big fan of the Civilization series in general. It does have Total War-like battles, though. It does have Total War-like battles. Hard to complain about that. Uh, did I already load the game setup? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, let me check the game options. Yeah, okay. Alright, everything's fine. <laughs> Cranked up the uh, maximum units and ships allowed per player. Oh, yeah. Cheat codes are off. And oh god, team mode's off, thankfully. Alright, uh, no. Uh, yeah. So this is actually going to be the map we're going to play on. A map is a series of, qu of uh, systems. It's called a quadrant. So, we have three clusters within a quadrant, because I turned off all warp points connected, so we can have separate regions. There will be ways to travel between that once you advance far enough into the tech tree. But, for the moment, our objective will be to conquer the initial cluster that we start in. Alright, so first off, I'm going to add a new empire. No, wait, I did not want to do that. I wanted to load empire from file, because I have an empire. Aha! The Alexandrian Imperium! With Emperor Omicron Kelvin. Alright. So, this game has an extreme amount of customization. And I mean an extreme amount. Like, uh, you can choose a style for your ships. Uh, do I? Yeah, I'm gonna keep that. Uh, that'll sort of influence how all designs look. Uh, you can choose a flag. And you can choose a ton of fluff here. The name of your empire. The type it is. Doesn't have any actual effect. Your title, your name. You can actually uh, get a name file for designs, and you know how your computer controls it. Racial details. Uh, you can get your race name, your race's plural name, physical type. There are lists here, so I can, for example, say crystalline, symbiotic, serpentoid, and so on. Techno organic. You can select a nice portrait. Again, none of this does anything until now, where we get to planet type and atmosphere. This is the type in which your home planet is. It will also influence greatly what you can colonize. For example, you'll have a tough trouble colonizing anything that isn't your home atmosphere. So we've picked a hydrogen atmosphere. That means carbon dioxide, methane, oxygen, and none uh, are going to be trickier to colonize. Uh, the fact that we started on a gas giant isn't necessarily influential. Uh, it does depend on uh, some other stuff, but I'll get to that. Government. This uh, gives you a series of effects. It's actually just a, I suppose, sliding scale. Where, for example, in Anarchy, we have population loyalty decreased by 8%, and Hive at increased by 8%. Likewise, research generation reduction to research generation increase. And Collective is just a ridiculous, uh, far fetched version. I've picked Republic for now. I'm actually tempted to drive it all the way to Anarchy. Oh, that's that's tough. Actually, I'm gonna stick to the safe side and go oligarchy. And society. Uh, wait, I've picked scientists. Have I? No, scientists. No, I'm gonna go with industrialists. Maybe. It. I am really indecisive, and uh, that's why I sort of had everything halfway prepared uh, before coming onto this, because otherwise it would take me three episodes just to set up my empire. And it might still take me three episodes to hit my empire. I'm just going with whatever I picked before. I'm trusting my old self. Anyway, this is just basically a... You get to pick one of them and get a series of bonuses. Sometimes they come with penalties. For example, Berserkers are godly in combat. And... You know, 10% damage plus 20% chance to hit. Uh, but everything else is pretty shit. Like, resource gathering is down. Research, down. But on the other hand, you just have classical warriors here. Which... 
uh, aren't quite as good as Berserkers, but they don't have anywhere near as many penalties either. So, you know, do what you will. It's a simple bonus you get, and then we get into racial traits. Uh, you have a certain number of racial points available. In this case, there was 2,000. I selected uh, various things. Uh, I got resource gathering aptitudes, which uh, allows for better resource gathering, if you couldn't guess. An increase to our research points. And to help balance this out, I've picked foolish, cowardly, and physical weakness. I uh, also got space yard construction rate improvements. Anyway, where was I, right? So, I, in this game, follow the, shall we say, uh, Clausewitz doctrine of combat. I don't need intelligence. Never have and never will. That's just sort of my playstyle. I don't generally need it. Although you can cause a lot of havoc with intelligence. You gotta be careful. Uh, cowardly and physical weakness I've picked because I don't really do planetary combat either. Uh, I'm a bit of a racial purist in this game. Bit of Hitler. Uh, rather than capturing a planet with aliens on it, I will more than likely just wipe them out. Yeah. That's just sort of how I do things around here. Take it or leave it. Uh, let's see, what else did I take? Environmental weakness and low reproduction. Which is okay. They hurt a little bit, but it doesn't, it's not too bad. Uh, and for some other bonuses, hardy industrialists and crystallurgy. Hardy industrialists mean that my space yards produce 25% of the normal rate, and since I picked the uh, better space yard thing, that's a total of a 30% boost. And the reason I picked that is because usually I go with temporal knowledge, because that gets me access to the temporal shipyard, which is an improved shipyard that just works a lot better than the regular shipyard. But in this case, I've decided to go crystallurgy to mix things up a bit. Uh, so, to compensate, I've picked hardy industrialists and all that stuff. Uh, and crystallurgy. The gains access to the crystallurgy technology tree. Uh, basically, there are a series of technology trees here. Crystallurgy, organic, psychic, religion, and temporal. You don't even have to take any of these if you don't want to. But they do give you advanced ships that are better. The, the ships are just plain better. Um, and it gives you various uh, technologies as well. I know there's uh, special organic and crystal ships. I haven't really played too much with them. And then you get a certain number of research points to spend. I have a few left over. That you can spend on various uh, technologies to start yourself off with. I've taken the liberty of just going straight applied research. Like, to the 16th level. And investing my leftover points in whatever I felt like. Uh, which was light hull construction at the time and colonization of different planets. Yeah, that's, that's all I spent my tech on, was uh, applied research. Because I'm gambling that uh, a technology advantage will be significantly useful. It follows the law of many turn-based strategies. Higher technology, you're the king. Uh, we'll have to see about how that goes, though. There are actually a lot of different technologies that you start to unlock. For example, I just click Cultural Str Studies. Suddenly I have a lot of things uh, available. And, I mean, likewise, if I just hit the button for physics, although not too many of them appeared, I believe shields appeared? Yep. Shields. And to make matters a bit more interesting, a lot of these technologies, um, they're iterative technologies, so a lot of them just go up to level 99, I believe. Uh, some of them stop at 50. I think, like, applied research stops at 50. I don't honestly know, though. Uh, so yeah, there are a lot of technologies, and you unlock a lot. To give you an idea of how many different ship types there are in this game, Every time you hit level 5 in a certain hull construction, you unlock the next kind. This is the last one. This is this gets you Dreadnought. Battleship and Heavy Freighter. Cruiser. Light Cruiser and Medium Freighter. Destroyer. Frigate and Small Freighter. There's also Colony Ships. It's right, easy way to clean out the points spent. There we are. So, there are a lot of different sh types of ships, and including that, then there's drones, satellites, bases, carriers somewhere. I, I, I forget where you, where you have to research the carriers. Um, but, uh, yeah, there, there's a lot. Oh yeah, there's weapons platforms too, forgot about those. 
Uh, yes, planet-based weapons platforms. Yes, quite. All right, so there's there's definitely a lot of uh, technology and customization you can do. And that's what I love about this game. So we're just going to dive right on in now. And I've gone over it. Tech tree is enormous and complicated. So people who know Hearts of Iron should have no problem with this game. <laughs> uh, hang on. There we are. All right, so let's see where we end up. Player placement. Do, 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 do. The game does have better loading times than Civ 5, though, so there's that. <laughs> uh, Alright, and... Okay, this is our system. We started here in Melovem. Alright, so this is the initial system. It's around a small and dim yellow star. Simple stuff, okay. And we do have a habitable planet here, a large hydrogen rock. Perfect. So immediately I'm going to jump into this. And we're going to get a get a nice little ship going here. We have three to choose from colony ship, frigate, and small freighter. Immediately we're going to begin construction. I love this music. Hang on. What is the distance? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it needs nine ion engines. Okay, to make it there in one turn. Oh yeah, so we're gonna build a research facility as well. That's fine. Uh, the reason we're gonna build a research center is because each facility takes 1,000 kilotons of space. And depending on the planet and its size, you have a variant amount of facility space. In this case, we have 20,000 kilotons, so. We can we start with 19 buildings, so we do get to build a single building of our choosing. Uh, let's see. Great ship. Um, I'm just trying to debate. Like, do I want to go full 10, or I need a bridge? Crew quarters and a life support. There. You have to get rid of all the warnings before you can actually do anything. This vehicle must have a colony module on it. Well, we can do that. We need it to colonize a rock planet, so we will toss a rock colony on it. And we just need to set up a series of ion engines. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Okay, as I thought, it can only have a maximum of ten. A maximum of ten. Alright, let's see. There must be a name for this design. That we can do. That we can do. Well, I have a bunch of USSR names that I can choose from, but I'm a simple man, shall we say. Rock Colony MK1. The Mark 1 Rock Colony. There. And put a classification on it. Oh well. I suck at that. I can do I can fix it up later. Anyway, we're now going to tell it to build a rock colony mark one. Simple enough. Add item. Uh, good, so that'll actually all be done in two turns. Next up, we have a hundred extra thousand hundred thousand extra research points to spend this turn, because it's the first turn. So we get a little more into that. Um now, if we research a little five we get medium light hull construction, so we're definitely going to do that. 11% it is, okay. Uh, we're definitely going to rank up on Crystallurgy, because you'll notice this gets us a whole different set of ships. Which I would not be uh, totally against. Getting my hands on. 22%, excellent. Uh, and I think we're going to go with physics, because uh, shields and energy weapons both appeal to me. Now, each turn is 0 0.1 years, so, you know. Um, also, for a sense of scale of this game, I believe time victory, if you set it, is 1,000 turns. So it's a bit longer than Civ V um, at regular pace. And I feel like I should at least put a little bit in industry. You know? I should probably put at least a little bit into sensors. 
Fifteen percent sensor should be fine. Okay, is there anything else I need? Well, hmm. Chemistry, plasma, fighters and mines. Ah, oh, yeah, I'll need construction at some point, too, to make carriers and stuff. Which, not terrible. I don't mind carriers at all. Defense systems, torpedo weapons. Or we could go with computers and get automated ships. It's a possibility. We'll see. Anyway, there. So that's more or less all we need to do for our first turn. Since we haven't made contact with anyone else, most of the stuff is... Uh, relevant. But we do have things like a list of all the plants in the system, which is useful. There are a list of all ships in the system, obviously. No ships in the system yet, but either way. Yes, I do wish to end my turn. Yeah, I will rush through its turns. The game will process, and we begin again. Level 2 in physics. Level 1 in crystallurgy. How far did I get? Level 5 in sensors. Not terrible. Alright. And 8% for that, sure. We definitely don't need a uh, level th 2, or yeah, level 3 physics. Level 3 physics is irrelevant. Uh, crystallurgy level 2 maybe would actually be okay. But it's rather quite expensive, so we're going to hold off on that. It would take a lot of our research points. We'll get more, don't worry. Uh, I mean, that's actually going to be the first thing I set up. We're going to be rushing through about as much of uh, medium light hull construction as possible to get larger ships going. Also, as quickly as possible on that. Uh, anything else I need? Well, need to pull this off, obviously. Alright, so the reason that you can get keep going here and keep developing these ships increases their base health as well as how much you can fit on them. So, originally I talked before about, um, you know, the design and stuff. And the designer here. Oops. Close that. Although it doesn't really matter where uh, on the ship you put things. In particular, since we have uh, level 5 now, we can get 450 kilotons. Whereas our little frigates can get 350 kilotons. Before, our Rock Colony Mark 1 could only carry 425, as it is only a level 4 ship. The whole structure is also 130 kilotons, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, so that's the basis of uh, further research. So if we want really good, like, colony ships that can carry multiple colonies, you just need to research uh, the light, light hull construction. Uh, it goes up to 10, I believe, for those. Probably best that it does only go up to 10. Uh, and then there's, after uh, base construction, you get... There's three stars of base construction, I know. Yeah. Oh yeah, right, once you get super heavy hull construction and level two base construction up to five, you get death stars. I believe they're called base ships. <laughs> uh, I personally just use them as giant shipyards in space. Significantly easier. Keep your production moving around. Also decent for mining. Mm -hmm. Anyway. That's going to be it for now, folks. So, without further ado, I would like to thank everybody for watching the first episode of Space Empires 5. Remember, you can always hit the subscribe button to make sure you never miss an episode. Thank you, everybody, for watching. As always, this has been your lovely host, Galvin, signing off.